Welcome back to the channel and today we're looking at the Remet Knives RT Swordfish and this is a gravity knife. So what is a gravity knife? A gravity knife opens on gravity. <laughs> this one's a little bit different because it, it locks in the open position and in the closed position. So is it considered a gravity knife or is it more like the Civivi button lock elementum that you got to use the gravity to deploy it but it locks open and closed. So I don't know. I don't know the legalities of these. I do know that they are illegal to carry in some places. The majority of your places you can own them. Um, but definitely check your local laws if you do plan on picking one up. But I think this is pretty exciting seeing a company like Remet, who's a really small company, make their way up to something like this. And this is a different way to do it. A little bit more different than I've seen in the past. Good bit different than the Riot Exo. Uh, this one has a little slide open mechanism and now they have locking features on it but this was an original one that did not. So with this particular one you have this little slide button kind of like an out the front and you, you push it forward it's spring loaded and the knife comes out. Whenever I'm not at a 90 degree angle it doesn't drop as fast of course since gravity is doing the work. These come in at $259 and I have discount code to get $30 off of that, which I think is an amazing price for everything you're getting here. The discount code is RT101NK. I will have it down in the description along with the link to this knife. I think they were available at the time I'm shooting this video, but once they are out of stock, they will be doing another run of them. I think he said uh, should be coming in March. So this is a nice size EDC knife at 7.83 inches long with a 3.15 inch, somewhat of a clip point tanto blade, keeping that tip nice and low so you can still use that tip for drag cuts if you want. Blade still, and this one's M390, and it has a brushed satin finish on the flats that looks nice, and what they call their pearlescent finish. And it's not, it's not a, a regular bead blasted finish. I'm not sure what finish this is, but this particular one, after all my testing, didn't smudge up at all. It's very reflective. And I have not had any of their knives with this finish corrode on me. I live here in the south and that's something that usually happens to anything that's bead blasted for sure. So I'm not 100% sure what the pearlescent finish is, but this one looks nice and it didn't smudge up. Being that this is a Tanto, you do have a secondary point right there where the two grinds meet. So if you want to use that to say get into a package and you don't want to go too deep, you could. You do have a slight bit of belly in that Tanto area. So I think that'd be considered a Japanese Tanto. You do have a sharpening choil that does give you a good bit of sharpening light before it'll start to widen back up. You can see that plunge is way back here. So I'm glad they did that. And the way this thing's set up, you could easily extend that if you needed to because it locks way back here. This is a flat grind here, so of course, being that you have such a narrow blade and a short grind height, you can only get this so thin. And they still manage to get that flat grind down to about 17 thousandths at the thinnest portion in this straight area right here. However, it's going to thicken up rather quickly the more and more you sharpen it. It did come nice and sharp out of box, and being that you had that nice straight edge, it worked well for the cardboard, sliced really well. And as long as you keep a nice sharp edge on it, it's going to slice real, it should slice very well for you. One thing I noticed right away whenever I started testing the ergos in the wood, that the handle was very comfortable. And, I, and that's for a couple of reasons. First off, the, the handle is completely enclosed, like an out the front. So you don't have any holes in the scales that your, your hands are going to kind of bury into when you're really bearing down. Plus, you got a very neutral, like, almost coffin shaped handle and they did a good job of beveling all the edges so there's no sharp spots where you don't want them to be and any grip is going to be really really good reverse grip gas station fighting grip is going to be really nice because you got a nice flat spot at the end and I had a few people ask if this could handle some stabbing so let's test that out real quick and see so I figured why not so being that there's no guard on this knife, I did put my Kevlar gloves on just in case and I was able to keep my thumb at the top while still holding those wings 
the locking wings in my hand while I was coming down with force. Now, I was hitting it pretty hard into the wood, burying it pretty deep, and being that it's at ten, it has that tanto point, it's nice and bulky, bulky. And it penetrated pretty darn easy. I didn't have to do it, you know, very, very hard or anything. It was very easy to go in, and it held up. Now, is this a knife you'd want to do something like that over and over and over again? No, definitely not. And I mean, what could you be doing unless you're just practicing in some wood? You know, I don't know. Depends. Your mileage may vary. I don't really have anything that I stab into it unless it's a bag of potato chips or a bag of sand, bag of dog food. One thing that I did notice after I finished the stab portion of the testing is if you look at the wings, this is where the blade sits when this thing is closed. You can see how it's kind of galling up the titanium right here and right here. Now, it didn't hurt anything at this point, but I'm sure if I would have, you know, kept going and going and going, then that's going to get deeper and deeper. I think one thing that I may do, and I think they could do this if they wanted to strengthen this up some, I, where these lines are, I'm going to carbonize all that so it would make it a lot stronger in that portion so your hardened steel wouldn't be banging against softer titanium. Just a thought. I mean, they could go a step further and put a little metal plate right there, but I think carbonization will be just fine. And once again, that's not something I ever do anyway. But if you did have to do it, it's, it's going to be able to handle it, you know, once or twice. Nothing that I cut really gave it any problems. All the stuff on the flat cutting surface, you can either use that tanto spot portion, being that it has some belly to it, and you can use that, but it is a little bit thicker up there. Or you can use that secondary point, Whenever I had it raised up on the block doing that type of cutting, I was using that secondary point. So it's a useful blade. It held its edge nicely. It's still nice and sharp. And it depends on what you're buying this knife for. It's just, if this is your daily user, you know, it, it might not be, you know, the best for that. Just because, just like an out the front, they're not the sliciest blades. Even though, like I said, this one's ground decently thin right now. It's going to thicken up rather quickly. I think this is the fourth premium remet that I've tested. I think they were all M390. And I've been impressed. Their heat treats are quality on point. Uh, I had no crazy, nothing crazy happen. Uh, I've sharpened them all up after the testing. The sharpness came up fast. They deburred easily. I, I think they're doing a good job. Now the deployment action of the knife is just going to depend on if you have it straight up or not. It goes down fast and comes out fast. Whenever I did take this apart, I'll pop that up on the screen now to show you the inside look of it. The one thing I did notice, and I don't know if there's a reason for this, so I didn't do it. There's no lube on the track at all or where this thing's sitting. I don't know if it would help or if it would hurt anything. That's something I'll have to ask them. But, you know, as it sits, mine's, mine functions nicely. It's very addictive. Internet, like it and the button is comfortable to slide forward and it seems like a pretty solid setup. I like how they kept the, the show side scale where the button is completely free of hardware. It's all on your opposing side and you have that nice little carbon fiber inlay just for a little added touch along with the little jigging pattern into the titanium that gives you a little bit of grip. They also have some milling on the sides Kind of goes with the side fins right here. The fins give you a little bit of texture. If you were holding the knife like this, trying to go into something, you know, so you don't slide up that blade, that's going to give you a little bit of extra traction. It's not super sharp or anything. I think you'd be fine if you're, if you're in a reverse grip, holding that top from going down onto the blade. You know, that's something you have to be cautious of. On the back side, there is a spot for a lanyard. However, there's no pocket clip, and that's something I really wish they had, but then I don't know where they where they would put it. First, I was like, why don't they just, they could have tapped it and put it right here. However, I don't think I'd want this thing tipped down in my pocket just in case. You know, I, I don't ever see it coming out, but if you didn't, say if you got it like that or halfway and you didn't get it all the way back in there, that's a recipe for disaster right there. So I don't know. And then if you put it, say if you put it right here, then when you're holding it, it would it would probably mess with the ergos unless it was, a, it was a nice contoured titanium clip. But for me, this is how I've been carrying it and I've been enjoying it like this. 
I bought this little slip off of Amazon a long time ago and I didn't really have a, a purpose for it because it's a lot it's a big one it's more for like a multi-tool or something it came with a little um, ink pen thing on the side but I cut it off because I didn't need that but why I like this one is, is it has a pocket clip or belt clip attachment I wore it in my pocket this is from Easy Ant I will also have this link down below if, if this is something you're interested in, if I could find it. Soft leather, it's, it's really cheap. I think this was like 20 something bucks. You know, it's not the highest quality, but it gets the job done. But this is how I carried it. I put the button side against here just so it would hold it tighter. And it fits nicely. I did cut, I did round this over, cut some of this off because it did stick up a little higher. So that works. Eventually, I'll probably send this to a leather, a leather maker and get him to make me a custom one that I can put it like this and maybe to where this button is sticking out some, you know, where the button's showing and to where I can grab this, pull it out. So this works for now, but I, I definitely plan on getting something. I wish something like this came with it because for now, all you have is a lanyard. You can either drop in the pocket or... Or before I used this, I did have it in one of my EDC pouches that I carry with me all the time. If I didn't explain it all the way, I'll, I'll explain it one more time on how this thing does lock up. Like I said, this little trigger spring loaded. The blade, whenever I showed you on the inside, is hooked to a little piece in there. So whenever you push this up, as you can see, those little wings come out. And the blade, at the back end of the blade, there's a little not to allow that to sit on top of these little wings nice and tight there's no up and down whatsoever very tight lock up i can i can go side to side with it but that's only because you know there's nothing pushing up against here so it can still fall freely i think it's more than tough enough and it has that same little mechanism as an out the front doing this job right here i think that's actually what's opening and closing the little wings I, i'm not too sure but definitely intricate intricate and interesting your weight is 4.06 ounces not bad for as much titanium as you have here now for some quick size comparisons we have the microtech ultratech and the guardian tactical recon 035 it's almost identical in length to the ultratech minus the glass breaker and it's a little bit longer than the recon 035 here it is next to the full-size Riot Exo, butt-to-butt -butt with the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. And lastly, we have the Spyderco PM2 and Power 3. All right, nitpicks and complaints. Uh, there's no modern carry option. I would have loved either a pocket clip or uh, a clip slip like this, something, or even like a Kydex like the Exo. But I was able to find something. And the only other thing, the hardware is Torx T6, but... It's not one you really need to disassemble. And lastly, this is just a very minor nitpick. Like I said, maybe they could have carbonized the, the two spots up there on the titanium. So the contact with the hardened steel on tie wouldn't start to wear into it over time. But I think if you're using it as a regular EDC knife and cutting with it, I think you're going to be perfectly fine. It's not like you're slamming it up against it like you would a frame lock or something like that. So it just depends. Something I can do myself and I probably will. I'll probably just carbonize that or they could put, you know, if they want to do something, they could either carbonize it or put harden that face right there carburize it but overall i think it's an absolute home run i absolutely love it i think it's unique i think it looks really nice it functions nicely i think it's priced well and i definitely definitely think this competes with the riot exo in some ways i like this more than my riot exo and there's maybe one or two things that i like more about the riot exo they're both great they're both completely different and they both function completely different. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.